Does the famous Godox COB light finally have some real competition? I have a new light for filmmaking and for YouTube here in the studio. It is the Soup Photo P100 light. This is Alan Halfhill for Personal View. Let's take a look at this new light. Let's open up the box and see what's inside. And here we are. There is a bag. And this is a nice bag for the light. You can see it right here. That this is really quite a very nice bag. And let's open up the bag and turn around and unzip it. And what we have in here is this little spacer. You also have the reflector and the manual. And that comes out of the reflector. And all these wrapping comes off the reflector as well. And we'll put that aside. And before we take out the light, let's look at what's in this top because it's quite heavy. And that is the power supply the AC power supply. It's fairly large, but this is a 24 volt power supply. And the power cable as well is up here. And a nice little Velcro to Velcro it to your light stand. Now we'll take out the light and put the bag over here. And this is the Soup Photo P100BI. Right here, it's very, very square. This is quite a square light. And one of the reasons it's as square as it is, is actually quite good. And that is, if you see on the side here, there is a battery mount for Sony L mount batteries. The Sony FP950, 970, fit right on the side of the light. And you need to put two batteries, one on each side. That's why there's two slots. Also, on the back of the unit is your controls, which you can see here. And then on the front of it, of course, is the COB and the Bowens mount. The build quality of this light is quite good. It is a plastic. It's not metal. It's plastic. But it's a very nice plastic. It doesn't feel cheap at all. It feels very strong. And the mount on the bottom is also plastic, but it again seems very, very strong. And I haven't had any problems with it. What they have done is made it so there's, it will lock very tightly when you lock it down, which is good being plastic. With its compact size and plastic, it makes it quite lightweight. In fact, what we'll do now is weigh it. And I'll put the light onto this scale. And as you can see, it's 968 grams, which is pretty light for a COB light. I'll take the supplied reflector, which is made out of aluminum, and lock it in there like so. And then we'll put that on there. And that's 1128 grams is what that weighs. This light and reflector. So this is a pretty lightweight unit. And now we'll see how big this is. We'll put that out of the way and grab my ruler, trusty ruler, and we'll put the light down here. And we have from the back of the light, 120 millimeters. The height of the light is 110 millimeters. And the how wide is it? It is 120 millimeters. So it's pretty pretty close to being square. And now I'll take this light and put it on this stand right here. 
and tighten it. And I can still turn the light, as you can see here. And what we're going to do now is plug in the 24 volt power supply cable, like so. And now if I hit the power button down, it will turn the light on. As you can see, it's quite bright. In fact, I can use this control right here to dim the light. As you can see, it's dimming the light. And if you turn it up, that goes to battery by flipping the switch up. But again, flipping it down turns it to AC power supply. And on the back, you have your CCT, which controls the color. We'll turn the brightness back up again so you can see it changing. Yeah, there. Okay, that was getting blue. Now, now we're getting warmer, so you can see that it's getting warmer. And that's at 3,400. There's 3,200. And let's go back to... 55, 5600, and as I say, you can go all the way up to 10,000, which is really blue, as you can see, or just way past daylight. And so it's quite adjustable, like on most of these lights. And let's go back to 5600. There's 5600. Now to do special effects, you push this second button, and as you can see, it's doing a special effect. We're not going to tell you what those are right now because I want to show you the next button is the channel. And as you can see, I can change the channel on the back of this LCD. And there's also a group button so you can say which group you want to be on. And that makes the controls fairly easy to set on this unit per se, and one of the reasons why I am not showing you the effects is there's actually more control on an iPhone app. To install the iPhone app, they actually have a QR code in the manual, even though it says ISO, it should be iOS, and you just go to your camera and scan the code, which is right here, View an App Store. And it takes me to the Apple App Store, and there is the software that we need for this. So I just hit Git. Once the app is installed, we just hit Open. And it says, do you want to use Bluetooth? And I say yes, because that's what controls this light, is the Bluetooth. And we're looking for a device add device and there it sees the device right there add to my devices and now we can see that that light is being connected and once I've done that I will be able to change the brightness and the color temperature as you can see I can control the intensity of the light if I put my finger here and go back and forth like so. And you can see how that is happening. You can see over here the color temperature is changing. That's 8200. We can go all the way down to 30, 2800. And of course, your 3200 incandescent color. And then back to 56, which is right there. Actually, that's 55. I can hit the little plus and it'll go much more accurately. Same thing here, just hit the plus. One of the cool things about this app is you can actually have different effects. Here's lightning, and you can adjust the frequency of the lightning down here. You can adjust the brightness intensity right here. And then it shows you fire. It shows you fireworks. Faulty bulb, television, here's television, just changing the color 
or in the, br the, the brightness back and forth as if you're watching TV. And then paparazzi, which is a flash coming up. Yeah, here's paparazzi flash. So you could be shooting a scene where you know, someone is coming out in an award ceremony and they're getting flashed by all the paparazzi, that sort of thing. And then you just click back here to CCT and you're back to your normal controls that we use for regular lighting. I don't know if you've noticed this, but I am running this light in this room. There are no other fans in this room whatsoever. And I can barely hear the light. I don't know if you can hear the light on the microphone, but I can barely hear it. That is one thing that really impresses me with the light is how quiet it is. It has fans in here. It has the vents in the top and that sort of stuff. But it's just really, really quiet. Now I'm going to use this sound meter to show you how quiet this light actually is. I just turned it on. Don't believe me? You can see the light is on. That is one quiet light. Now if you have multiple lights from Soup Photo, you can control them in the app separately or together. And what you do is you hit connect control channel 3BA groups because that's what this light is on. Or you do up individual lights so you can have multiple lights. If they would show up here if I had multiple lights. And <clears throat> that's quite nice because you can control them individually or together. Now I'm going to turn the light off and unplug it because we're going to put some batteries on this thing. I'll move it over here so you can see. You just take the battery and just shove it down like so and it clicks. There's a release on the side of this unit. And then we'll go to the other side and put the other battery on as well. And you have to do this because of this being, you know, a uh, 24 volt light. It needs at least two batteries just to power it. And there we go. We clicked it in and we'll turn it back around so you can see the controls. And if I go up, this light should come on and it does. And you can go all the way up to 80%. You can't go to 100 on battery. But you can go up to 80. I'm going up to 80 right now. And now I'm at 80%. But that's as far as I can go. The effects still work, as you'll see in a moment. And you can adjust the color temperatures like just like you could before. But it only works at 80%, which is still quite bright since this is a 100 watt light. And 80% is quite bright. But this makes it very, very portable because now I can just take this off of here and carry the light and just hold it like so and actually hold the light if I wanted to and travel with the light if I'm doing a walking interview or whatever. And of course, I would just turn the brightness down if I was doing an interview or something like that or just wanted to move the light around because now it's totally running on battery. And it's so nice to be able to use just regular Sony MP batteries versus some battery belt or big V mounts. It makes it not that heavy, even with these batteries where a V mount would be quite heavy. To remove the battery, all you have to do is just push in this little lever right over here and then pull it up like so. Now I'm going to put on a different accessory onto my light. And what you want to do is hit this blue and push it back. Little button, blue button. Take off this lightweight reflector. And now I can put on this spot. It makes it easier if I take the spot out and then turn it like so and it clicks. 
As you can see, it takes all sorts of Boeing accessories. And then I just can now turn this around again, like so. And then we'll turn on the spotlight. And you can see I need to turn the brightness back up again because it's going through this blue gel. And we can make the spot more narrow. I used a professional spectrometer to do color readings for this light. Here you can see the light spectrum. There's a lot of old and new standard considering the quality of light. Here we'll touch on two of them. First is the color rendering index, CRI. The measured result was 96.2, which is really good for a cinema light. Now let's move on to the TM30. The TM30 is at 94.1, which is a very good result as well. With these colors, you should not have to do much grading because it's quite accurate. Now let's look at the light and see how it behaves in real conditions such as how hot the light will get in normal usage. I took thermal pictures of the light, and as you can see, the hot spot is not bad at all. And the light does not really get that hot. The cooling is very well controlled. This light, the P100BI from Suit Photo, is a great light at a great price, under $200. What more could you ask for? This is Alan Halfiel for Personal View. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you later.